Hello Galaxy, I'm Chris Perillo, and I want to help you through the decision-making process if you happen to be one who's trying to decide whether or not you want an iPhone 8 or 8 Plus or an iPhone 10, unless of course you are a rare bird indeed and you're getting all the iPhones. I am not that bird, necessarily. I'm, I'm just going to go with one. And so I went through a decision-making process on my own. I thought I'd share a little bit of that insight with you and potentially even give you a little more insight to better be informed, which is exactly what you should do if you're thinking about plunking down any amount of cash on a device that you're probably going to be using every minute of every day. So uh, let's go ahead and, and, and try to give a general overview. Uh, first, I'm going to discuss some of the values or, or possibilities that you may be in the iPhone 8 or 8 Plus camp. And then I'll go through some of the values uh, that may put you squarely within the iPhone 10 camp. We're not really going to be discussing uh, any other phones outright, uh, although uh, they may come up. So uh, if you see that most of the features and additions exist in the 8 models compared to the 10 model, then you're probably more in the 8 or 8 plus camp. And I'm saying that because there are some other dramatic differences between uh, the 8 and the 8 plus and the 10. And I'll of course be diving uh, deeper into that as we go on. But what I mean by this is you have uh, uh, the innards of the phone, and you have some of the basics of the phone. And for the most part, I would say that these three are going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Uh, of course, there are exceptions to this. There are certain things that exist in the 8 and the 8 Plus that don't necessarily exist in the 10. But if it's the uh, feature that you see in an 8 that also exists in the 10, and when I say 8, 8 or 8 Plus, then you're probably going to want to be in the 8 or the 8 plus camp more so than the 10 for reasons that we'll discuss. Uh, if you appreciate balance and clean design, you're probably going to want to be specifically in the 8 or the 8 plus camp, not the 10. Now, w when I'm talking about this, I'm not specifically speaking to iOS in general because for the most part, iOS is going to run and look just as good on the 8 or the 8 plus as it would on the 10. What I mean by this is specifically the symmetry of the screen. Uh, you, you cannot argue that uh, the screen, a, a full-on rectangle, edge to edge, uh, minus the bezels, uh, is a, a cleaner design. A rectangle is a cleaner design. Now, you may argue and say, no, it's not. I'm like, I don't know, I don't know about you, but when I was growing up, like the shapes that we had, like, you know, when we were trying to, you know, master hand-eye coordination, which I've yet to do, uh, I didn't have a shape that had like a, a cutout at the top and a rectangle. It just, it did, it's not a shape. It's, it's, it's not a shape. It's not, it's not a basic shape. It's, it's not a recognizable shape. It's, it's subjectively awkward and not indicative of elegant design. So if you appreciate balance, what I mean by that is symmetry uh, and, and, and cleaner design in terms of uh, edge to edge, what you're actually using on the device. Because even if, you know, you've got a phone with bezels, you know, these edges, uh, you know, you're using the screen. The screen is your, that's, you're using the screen primarily on the phone. And you, you might make the decision, you, you may, you may tell me, I'm sure there's, there's one of you out there, again, one of the rare birds is going to argue that a screen that has this n n notch cut out sensor apparatus the intruding upon the rectangle is a valid shape. It is a shape. It's just not a common shape. It's, it's not a balanced shape, certainly when you hold it in different orientations. A cleaner design is absolutely a rectangle. Let, let, let's, let's fight about that, okay? Let's, let's, let's fight about whether or not a rectangle is clean or cleaner than something that's not symmetrical. Um, so that's what I'm saying. If you appreciate that or you, you recognize that, you're probably in the 8 or the 8 plus camp. Now, when I referred to, uh, just a, a few seconds ago, iOS being quote-unquote good, uh, this article just came upon my radar. And I think it's uh, uh, wonderful, and you need to read it, especially because I've, I've called this out since uh, iOS 7. Dive into the details of iOS 7 is Apple detail-oriented, or still detail-oriented. He makes the case. These are just some examples. Uh, iOS is very much death by a thousand cuts. This is, the, uh, this is the final, to my knowledge, or close to final beta of iOS 11. I've seen this stuff all the time. All the time. So, I mean, so if you want more documentation beyond the tweets that everybody's sending me and I'm retweeting, pointing these things out uh, in portrait or landscape mode on an iPhone 8 or 8 Plus or 7 or all the way back, all the way to a 10, iOS is a big problem, uh, you know, to, to, to wind up here, uh, you know, 
they're, they're certainly pushing technology, but slowly losing the detail-oriented focus on design and products like before. Apple is still my only favorite and mostly respect, respected company, mostly respected company. I sincerely wish that while stepping forward, Apple could still maintain those values they've cherished and built in the past. So I, I have to say that very clearly because you're not going to get a better OS, a better OS experience on a, uh, on a 10 over an iPhone 8 or 8 Plus. So don't consider I'm going to get a better iOS experience on one or the other because unfortunately you still have to deal with death by a thousand cuts. I have empirical evidence. I don't want to be told it doesn't exist. I, I've proven it over and over and over again and this article only underscores it again with data that you cannot deny. So I get a little agitated when people tell me that something doesn't exist when I know it does. We're not talking about a mythical creature in the sky. We're talking specifically about, like, not a flying spaghetti monster here, okay? That's what I meant. Mythical creature. Flying spaghetti monster. What else could it be? Um, so if, uh, if you don't want to wait for app developers to catch up, then you may be more interested in the 8 or the 8 Plus because the apps now have to adhere to a, a different type of screen. Now, I just recently spoke in a, in a video uh, about other people's perspectives, specifically developers and, and designers and, and UI and UX experts, and showed you uh, Mar one of Marco's tweets wherein he suggested this is just going to be a nightmare to, to manage and balance. They've got to create completely new assets for the apps. This happened a long time ago, and as, I, as the iPhone screens continued to evolve, it was less of an issue for many people. It was something that agitated me to an extreme degree because it, 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 was, it was a rather lackluster experience. I still have that issue even on new iPads. Some iPad apps have yet to be optimized for new iPad screens that, that have been around for year. Facebook. Facebook is one example. Facebook is yet to embrace a, a, anything beyond a more traditional iPad screen or a screen resolution. Uh, it, it looks horrible on on uh, iPad Pros. Absolutely horrible. Who doesn't? No one uses Facebook. <sighs> so uh, the, w what I'm saying is the apps will have to look different until they're optimized for the screen. And I would argue that you're, you're not going to believe this. Unoptimized to, to the to the iPhone 10's benefit. While while we're speaking about it, unoptimized apps actually look better then optimized apps do on the iPhone 10 screen. Because what happens, and I don't have an example to show you, but basically the top and bottom are cropped out, or the sides are cropped out. Black, nothing. Which of course makes the notch fade away. Nothing, it disappears in the OLED screen. Which is as well it should be. So what I'm saying is, uh, an unoptimized app may actually play in your favor if you're going with an iPhone 10. Because the once once it's not optimized for the screen, then you got to deal with other issues that you didn't necessarily have to deal with before. Uh, but if you, you don't want to have to worry about that necessarily, uh, you don't want to have to worry about uh, 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 the app developers to catch up because they probably already have with the, the taller iPhone screens, uh, then you're probably going to want to stay in this camp at least for the next year or so, depending on which uh, apps or games or, or, or whatever that you happen to use on a very frequent basis. It's different for everybody. If you want raw power without a high price or as high a price, I got to be careful because they're all kind of they're all kind of pricey. Let's, let's face it, Apple has kind of always you know been not exactly the cheapest thing. Um, traditionally, I, I believed it's been worth the money. That feeling has now shifted. Uh, so effectively, what I'm saying by this, in terms of power, is that you've got the same A11 Bionic chip. I know that sounds incredibly geeky. So let me go ahead and break it down for the people that I love talking to, and that's the people who don't understand what it is that other people may understand. You've effectively got the same innards. You've got the same processor driving pretty much most, if not all, of the experience throughout the entire device. And the A11 Bionic chip pretty much runs well on the iPhone 8, 8 Plus, as well as the 10. But I do want to show you something. Geekbench, which is pretty much the name in terms of synthetic benchmark scores, you got to keep in mind, benchmarks are synthetic. You, you never know what you're going to get, you know, in real world performance and how these are going to be, uh, you know, actually um, tangible in terms of benefits. But they've posted their iOS uh, uh, benchmarks. And this is what's interesting. So here we are. This is this is not biased. This is just data from there. It hasn't been updated, it says, in 14 hours. The last Yeah, fa 14 hours ago. It may very well change as more data comes in. That's what's be uh, beautiful about it. Uh, so it, we're going single core. Now we're going from the top down in terms of the highest performing single core score between the iPhone 8, iPhone 8 Plus, or iPhone 10. If you're interested, you can keep scrolling down the list, see how it compares to your iPhone or other devices if you know how to use Geekbench. I'll put the link in the video description. Uh, Reigning in at number one, what would you expect? 
what you expect? The flagship device? You, you you may expect the 10, right? Because it's 10. 10 is better than 8, right? It's like, it's and it's way better than the 9 that doesn't exist. God, if they give us an iPhone 9 next year, so help me. So, uh, number one. The number one right now, not right now, with the data that's come in, iPhone 8 with the A11 Bionic. Number two, iPhone 8 Plus. Number three, iPhone 10. So the difference, uh, I'm, you know, I'm not going to get into the numbers. It's, it's, it's incremental, right? But, but at the moment, and this could very well change, uh, I'm not saying bank on this. I'm just saying keep this in mind. Uh, they go toe to toe. Uh, but at the moment, the iPhone 10 with the single core score, which is probably the most valid score to use because a lot of apps and a lot of performance rely on single core uh, rather than multi-core. Uh, number one is eight followed shortly thereafter by uh, an 8 plus followed shortly thereafter although with a, a higher discrepancy um, uh, by the uh, the uh, the iPhone 10 so the 10 may not be latest and greatest it may be latest I'll give you that but I don't know empirically speaking right now because you can look right now and say oh Chris oh Chris they changed it they changed it Chris oh you're wrong you're wrong uh, I've, I've, I've qualified everything that I've said so let's, so let's move on so that's single core score let's, let's talk about multi-core this is the thing that Apple brags about uh, so, you know, let's look at it again. As you can imagine, we've got some differences. We have the iPhone 8, number one, iPhone 8 Plus, number two, and the iPhone 10, number three. How, how big of a difference? Well, the iPhone 8 and the iPhone 10, or the iPhone 8 and the 8 Plus are doing pretty well. 8 comes in at top, doesn't have to push as many pixels. Uh, and then the iPhone 10, or I'm sorry, the iPhone 8 Plus has to push a few more pixels. And then there's a huge leap between the performance of the, uh, the iPhone 8s uh, and uh, iPhone 10. Pretty, pretty big Pretty, pretty significant difference there. Not, not like, I don't, is that going to matter right now uh, to, to, to real world uh, performance? I don't know. It depends on how many multi, uh, you know, uh, multi core performance things you play, like games. Games, it may make a difference. Right now, uh, that's that's that could change. Could subject to change, but the data is there. You can always look at it. There's also metal scores. Those results are really uh, insignificant. The outright, they're 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 negligible. So uh, since Apple's like in, incorporated metal within the operating system. And its performance. Uh, honestly, I've been using unless they haven't turned it on. Uh, I, I've been using uh, uh, iOS 11. I don't feel it's any faster than iOS 10, so I, I don't feel any difference with with metal performance it, as it was before. Uh, it may improve. It may. Um, just just what I'm saying is, you may be spending money, but if you're looking to get performance and you don't want to spend as much money, you want more bang for your buck. Right now. And, and I believe this would be the case, you may get more bang or just the same amount of bang for your buck or perceivably just as much bang for your buck on an iPhone 8 or an 8 Plus over the 10. Keep that in mind. But as I said, you, I, I'm, I'm not a fan of benchmarks. They just give you an idea about where these things may, may fall, but for good reason. Uh, <clears throat> so then I've got... Oh, I tweeted that out earlier, uh, in case you weren't. I tweet a lot of stuff out before I cover it in video. So uh, the next thing I wanted to cover is if you appreciate the most usable screen space, then you may be interested in the iPhone 8 Plus. And what do I mean by that? So I thought the iPhone 10, right? The iPhone 10, big screen. It's, they brag about the measurement. Dude, it measures. It measures five, was it 5.8 inches? I, I lose track, right? Or to quote Ellen, uh, but, but 4.8, it, it measures, I totally tripped over my joke. It measures 5.8 inches, but 4.8 inches when it's cold. So, uh... <laughs> Ellen, I, I, I got to give credit. That joke it made me lol. Uh, let me pull up uh, an image here to better illustrate what it is that I'm talking about. The uh, uh, Someone did this graphic. It was on Reddit, theoretically. <laughs> I guess not. Um, give me a second. It, I, it was where I thought it was, and then it wasn't. All right, here we go. Okay. So iPhone 10, iPhone 8, iPhone 8 Plus. So we got different colors. I don't need to explain that to you. Um, this is usable space. This is visible space. These are safe zones uh, that, are, that are highlighted uh, out uh, or basically uh, cut out of the usable screen space between these devices. And if you can't really tell, the iPhone 8 Plus has the most, most usable screen space. It's not about measurement diagonally necessarily. It's about the most usable screen space. Why does that matter? Well, even if you, let's say, watch a video. I don't know if you watch. Maybe you don't watch videos on your phone. It's possible. Some people don't. Um, if you do, you probably rotate it in landscape mode. Some people record uh, video in portrait mode. Um, so uh, the uh, uh, w w what you're seeing here is that there's some space on the top and the bottom of the iPhone 10 that's just unusable. It's it's a no no fly zone for 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 data that's safe. 
It's it's not usable by by apps or by anything because Apple's got to reserve that for its own needs or or its its boundaries uh, to keep it, keep it a clean experience. You effectively have more usable uh, uh, usable space on an iPhone eight plus nine times out of ten because uh, it's it's effectively. It's not about how many pixels of the resolution. It's it's just how much is usable. So how much is usable? If you want more usable space, you're probably just as well off with an eight or an eight plus than you are with a ten. And I know, not according to the paper, right? Oh, Chris, how's that possible? The spec sheet clearly says that this measurement is this, and that's bigger, and bigger is better. Nay, nay. Why does Chris say that specs are irrelevant? Case number five hundred and twelve. So I'm just saying, you know, if you want more usable screen space or just about the same you want a, an 8 or an 8 plus uh if you are fine or if you like uh touch id if your patterns and your routines have have uh, effectively uh you know been patterned around it uh you you would probably want to be with the the uh, the iphone 8 or 8 plus not the 10. Why? Well, hello. I mean, I think we all know that the iPhone 10 doesn't have uh, a touch ID. It has face ID. I'm not arguing the merits of face ID. In fact, I, I've yet to, to challenge the merits of face ID because I, I think it's potentially usable, usable in a different way. And that's really what I wanted to speak to. Um, there is a suggestion uh, that has been thrown out by a variety of people who'd be more in the know than me uh, that uh, reachability has gone away in the iPhone 10. Could it come back? Possibly. Uh, but reachability would be the, f the, the feature where if you double tap and it comes down so that you can reach the top menu or do top things at the top of the app and then tap up rather than using you know another hand. You know, it's, it's reachability. Some people trigger it by accident. I've used it before. It's not necessarily a use case for me, but for accessibility, accessibility reasons alone, Touch ID may very well trump Face ID for a variety of features. Again, for accessibility alone, that may be a uh, basically a showstopper for you. Possibly, everybody's going to be different, but it is absolutely something to talk about. And even in the Touch ID, even in the an example where you just you're used to it, and your muscle memory with Touch ID is is is, is, is it a certain way? And I, I will actually extend this, you know, in, in 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 into muscle memory with iOS, which could change. Uh, I'm not challenging that, you know, it's going to be different on the iPhone 10 over the eight plus. If you've got muscle memory and that you're, you're quick to swipe around, you don't want to change that. You're going to be better, way better off with the, the eight and the eight plus. But this is a biggie. Um, if you also have an iPad, I'm also going to suggest that you'd probably be happier probably with the iPhone eight or the eight plus, not the 10 because of touch ID and because of gestures, because they've reworked a lot of how that works, certainly how it looks, on the iPhone 10. So if you're used to using, you know, if you're on the iPad and you touch ID, you know, whatever, um, and then you go to your phone, and the same types of swipe up, and there's the notification center, man, if you're used to swiping up on your iPad, and then you go to swipe to your iPhone, and then it closes the app, See, that's the thing that Apple used to pay attention to, like when it came to details, right? Like the keyboard layout, like I could go from this, switch from this keyboard to another Apple keyboard to another Apple keyboard on this computer, and it would all feel the same. Like I didn't, muscle memory was, I loved it. It was awesome. It's, it's, it's helped, it saved so much time, saved so much frustration. And now, effectively, they're introducing another usability pattern into the mix while having an old us usability pattern still out there. Will they update the iPad with the new Face ID? Probably. Will they bring the notch to the iPad? I don't know. I'm just saying. If you flip between the iPad and your iPhone, your frustration levels may be lower, and the cohesiveness of the experience may be more seamless on a more traditional iOS device, specifically because it works more like a traditional iOS device, the iPad. Sorry, I'm pointing at my iPad, not the virtual iPhone 10 that I keep tur go turning to. I think you're with me. Um, if you never did mind the bezel, then you're going to be fine with an iPhone 8 or an 8 Plus. But apparently, this is a thing. Like, there, I don't know if there's, like, a group of people, like, that think that bezels are horrible. Like, we must get rid of the bezel. Never had a problem with it. You know, I just, it's never been a thing. In fact, I, I love the bezel because I can grab my phone without interacting with it. You ever do that? You ever grab your phone without wanting to interact with it in any way, shape, or form? Right? You can do that with a bezel from the side. Have you ever held, held the phone? You didn't, you know, the top or the bottom, you know, grab your phone, hold your phone. But you know, if you trip something wrong because it's an all-screen phone, 
Don't worry, you're just holding it wrong. Where have I heard that before? So, if, if, if you are, if you're not put off by bezels, it, and I, I'm clearly in that camp because it's balanced or it's well balanced enough for, for, for my needs and it just, it, it is clean. Uh, I, I, I would say you are better off in an iPhone 8 or an 8 Plus camp because it, it doesn't exist over here. Bezels are bad. Even though I hate to break it to Apple, that notch, that sensor housing, that whatever you want to call it is a notch. I'm sorry. It's a bezel. It's just a different kind of bezel. I'm, I'm calling it a bezel. It's not bezel-less. The screen goes edge to edge. Well, well, so does mine. It goes to the edge of this part, and then it hits a bezel, and it goes to the edge of this part, and it hits a bezel. Goes. I'm sorry. You can't pull the wool over my eyes. It's, it's not going to happen. So, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a thing. Bezels. If you, if these, these are, it's, it's, it's the scourge of our times. Bezels. They're evil, apparently. <laughs> I, just, I, I don't understand how it's a thing. But for some people it is. And they're willing to put up with a fugly bezel. But they can't put up with bezels that are balanced. But they can put up with a fugly bezel. The thing known as a notch. It's a bezel. Not technically, but just functionally. It, 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 it destroys an otherwise seamless screen experience. Which is what the bezel people will argue. They want nothing but screen. Fine, get rid of the bezels, but we're not there yet. We can't talk about devices that haven't been invented. We can't talk about software revisions that haven't been developed. We can only talk about what we have right now. The options that are laid out in front of us. Uh, if you don't want to wait, speaking of, uh, for the iPhone 10 experience to get better, right? You know, there's there's this, I think, misguided uh, uh, you know, uh, idea that Apple will improve it in software. I think Apple's hubris is... Not going to let it improve anything in software. Why? Why would they fix something that is very clearly broken for documented reasons, even in this video? Uh, but if people keep buying the phone, so everybody else has got to suffer through this? Because people who don't see the problem don't have a problem with it. It doesn't get fixed. And then people who do see the problem have to deal with the problem. Do you understand what I'm saying? So the rest of us got to deal with the poor product. The rest of us. That's how I feel. The rest of us. Well, maybe it's not for us anymore. That's entirely possible. But see, then Apple, don't lie to yourself. Don't, don't, don't you don't, you don't deserve to be, you know, put in the same category as good design if you're going to sideline design. The Apple's no, in my mind, Apple is no longer synonymous with good design. They got, they got the cultural value ascribed to them for being known as de, for design. Nope. If that's what you think, you need to potentially open your eyes. Maybe you're, maybe you, this is how you use your phone. If you use your phone like this, I'm sure you're fine with them. But if you use your fine, if, if you use your phone with your eyes, I think you're going to be happier with the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus. Okay, that was a little flippant. Um, but in terms of getting better, you, people keep saying that it's going to get addressed in software. You don't know that. It hasn't happened yet. So where does that come in? Like, it ain't my ball to call. <laughs> I haven't seen it yet. Um, it, it's a systemic problem. That's the thing. This is just... It's a tip of the iceberg. This, intru this screen intrusion that creates a, an unsymmetrical um, a, a view. Uh, it's, 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 it's not the only thing. It's death by a thousand cuts. <clears throat> this, is not a, this is not the first time Apple's done something like this. Uh, if you want to upgrade immediately without worrying about inventory, I think you're going to be happier with an iPhone 8 or 8 Plus if it's just like, you know, I gotta have it, I gotta have the latest phone. Because there are people out there, right? I think you're going to be better off with an iPhone 8 or 8 Plus. Uh, if only because I know people are waiting. There are some people who just, despite the mountain of evidence contrary to what would be a good, in my estimation, it's relative, uh, a good purchase decision, um, a lot of people are going to try to get the 10. And it's already been, been known to be in short supply for whatever reason. Not everybody's going to be able to get the 10, which is, of course, going to drive up value. And you know, you know, you know you're going to have to fight scalpers. Good luck. You may make it. You may make it in, you know, right? That's possible. I'm just saying. Here's what's going to happen. People are going to see that the wait times go on for weeks, months, indefinitely. Who knows? And uh, they're just going to say, throw up their hand. I'm just going to go with an 8 or an 8 plus. And then when you fall, find yourself in that queue, 
It's going to be so far out. And, and so then you decide, well, what am, what am, well, I want something new because I'm running on an old phone. And I want the late, and then, but then the, the, the eight and eight plus inventory starts to go out. So, you know, I, I think if you want to upgrade immediately, I think right now there is a wait time, uh, but it's not that long. Uh, it's going to get longer in, in the immediate uh, uh, term. Uh, but if you don't want to have to worry about inventory, if you don't want to stress out about it, uh, I think the eight or the eight plus is fine. So now that I've largely talked about the, the, the value points and proposition around why I think the iPhone or eight plus uh, iPhone eight or iPhone eight plus may be better for you. I'm going to talk about, or try to talk through the reasons why I can think of. And the, by the way, this is not a definitive list. Like I'm sure you can come up with your own list and you, you, you probably should, right? Let's, you know, let's, let's talk about these things, but you know, try to base it on like, this is something that's real, not just like pie in the sky. Like you, you get, move me by facts, not necessarily by, uh, by feelings. Um, if you believe in owning the most expensive everything or luxury items, or you see the iPhone as a status symbol, or you want it for bragging rights, you want to be the first on your block, you know, you want everybody to keep up with you, uh, then you want the iPhone 10. Zero doubt in my mind. No, there's no doubt. Like, and, and some people are. I can't. I'm not going to slag them for that. I've talked about this recently. But I will tell you right now, um, if you want the prestige of owning an iPhone 10 without the price of the iPhone 10, uh, you can now get these kits or you can make them on your own to effectively slap a sticker on top of your, uh, your iPhone or even download the Android app that someone made today uh, to turn your iPhone into an iPhone 10 with this intrusion thing, the notch, the thing at the top of the iPhone uh, 10. Uh, so you can get the, da you can download the Android app and look like you're awesome. Like you've got the best uh, iPhone 10 ever. Like this was a special edition because you're using an app that looks horrendous, but that's the point um, because it just does on any phone. Uh, or you can just get a sticker. Uh, someone made this sticker kit, so you can just get a sticker. So if you want the prestige for it, not faulting you for it, but I'll just put it like down there. Just put it, slap it on there. Save yourself some money. I, I'm just, I'm trying to help, dude. If you want the 10, because of that, I just potentially saved you hundreds of dollars, if not thousands. So you can get mad at me all you want. Just slap a sticker on it. No, no, because you're doing prestige because you're trying to you're, you're trying to brag. You're trying to impress other people, right? You ain't doing it for you. You know what you did, right? But no one else did. Hey, people do that all the time. Just slap a sticker on it. They're making them now. It's great. It's the best thing. You can have the 10 without having the 10. And no one's going to know. You can be in line at your coffee shop and go, I think I'm going to pay for this uh, with the phone. Yeah. But be careful, though, because some people may know that the, the 10 does not have Touch ID. So you kind of have to hold it up to your face briefly. Like, you cover up the... the oh, it's... It's not working. I don't know, it's, it's not working right now. It's not. That may not play to your favor though, because then no one. You don't want anybody to know that you made a bad decision. So like, I tell you, I, I think I'm just gonna. I, I think I'm just gonna use cash. I think I, I'm just gonna use cash. So I'm just saying, save you some money. Uh, if <laughs> if you don't mind losing usability and beauty with your apps, I know what I said before that I think they that unoptimized apps for the iPhone 10 don't look all that bad. I believe that optimized apps for the iPhone 10 look horrendous, especially in, in certain configurations. Uh, not only because there are certain safe zones that just add padded pixels for no visual reasons, apart from keeping you a developer for touch, from touching a certain area that can't be touched. Uh, there's so many danger zones and safe zones on the iPhone 10, it's not even funny. Uh, even if you're like watching a video, right? Like on the iPhone 10 and like, well, I, 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 can't, I can't watch a video with this notch. I paid a thousand dollars, I'm sorry, I paid $1,500 for this, whatever. I bought, I bought it for. I'm going to have to crop to zoom out. So now you're wasting even more space that's not getting used. Oh, oh, bless your heart. Uh, but if, if you don't mind that, if you don't mind losing that usability, if you don't mind the, the general usability issues that I've already discussed, um, you know, I think, uh, I think you'll be fine. I think beauty is subjective. Yes, absolutely. But if you don't, I guarantee, if you haven't seen the iOS layout problems and issues in the software that have been replete uh, throughout the years, I'm sure horrible design on the iPhone 10 doesn't bother you a bit. Um, the, uh, uh, the next thing I will, I will note, uh, you never, if, if you're the type of person who never, ever uses landscape mode for anything, you may want the iPhone 10 because the moment you use landscape mode, it's just going to get fuglified. You can't necessarily avoid it. It's just, it's going to be unbalanced and, and, and certain parts are going to be occluded. It's just the way it is. Don't know what to tell you. I can't 
I can't, you know, paint some frosting on top of this for you just to have you be happy about the decision that you're about to make. Uh, landscape mode is a disaster in, in the iPhone 10. Portrait mode, not as big a disaster. Landscape mode hardly works well in, in, uh, in iOS now. I mean, I, God, I can't even tell you how many problem visual issues that I've had since iOS. Everyone has. So, uh, uh, the next thing I need to uh, say, Animoji. If you want to use Animoji more than twice, you may be in the market for an iPhone 10. Now, if you're like, oh yeah, I use it once. I use it twice. Then you may be kind of on the fence. Don't be wrong. I'd use it. Sure. Maybe once or twice. And then I'd forget about it until someone sent me one. And then I'd send one back, right? And then I'd forget about it for another six months. That's the way it was for me with, with Snapchat, right? I like I love the Snapchat filters. They're fun, right? They really are. Like, I'm like, oh, I should do this more often. I take screenshots. It's kind of neat. And then I forget about it for months. And like, oh, yeah. Then I see it posted in social. I got to do that. You know? it, it's a gimmick, which is fine. It's like sending a heartbeat to someone that I've done once. Uh, it's, it's not a selling point. They're using that to demonstrate the value of the, the, the camera apparatus on, on, the, on the front of the camera that, that you face, which is valuable. It's, it's definitely, I mean, it's like, it's an amazing sensor bar. No doubt about it. It is a feat of engineering. It's just that they slapped it in, in such a capacity that they've mitigated any of its value to anybody who appreciates the aesthetic of a well-balanced experience. So I'm not challenging the technology behind the, the, the iPhone X or how they're using the technology. What I am challenging is, is specifically how it was implemented. Not the feature, the implementation. Not the spec, but the experience. Um, so if you're not going to use it more than twice, you, yeah. but if you're going to use it a lot, all the time, every day, day and night, that's all you're going to do anymore, right? Oh yeah, definitely. Do the 10. Totally do the 10. Uh, if you see major differences in actual photo quality... Like, d dramatic differences, because uh, the, the iPhone 8 Plus camera kind of goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with the iPhone 10 camera, minus the front-sensing uh, array, which basically gives you the value of being able to do uh, the, the portrait lighting, which, again, I've used off and on. I've used at times. You have to have amazing light, uh, and even specifically with the front-facing camera, more so than the outward-facing camera. But it, it's... It, it, I, how many of these am I going to take? I don't, I, don't, I don't have any selfies now. I hate... I, Believe it or not, I hate pictures of myself. I hate videos of myself. So I, I don't see the value in that, right? It's not that much of a leap. The outward-facing camera, you've got, uh, in, the, in the dual cameras, you've got optical image stabilization on both of them, although it's handled differently on the 10, slightly better potentially. Uh, you can take potentially better low-light photos with the 10 than you can on the 8, but how many times you're in that situation? How much of a value is that for you? At that point, do you have a DSLR that, that may trump the, 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 the value of that 10's camera in terms of the price and the, what you're putting into it to what you're getting from it? Um, if you see, by and large, a dramatic difference between the photos taken in the 10 and the photos taken in the the uh, uh, the, the 8 or the 8 Plus, you know, yeah, then you, you would certainly go with the 10. But here's the thing. O on paper, I would absolutely want the 10 more than the 8 because of the cameras. I think they slight, they're just slightly better. Slightly. Like a mouse fart better. Um, but it's not worth it. To me, absolutely not worth it for all the aforementioned reasons. Uh, if you don't mind slightly enlarged assets on your device, uh, then you'd be fine. And I'm not sure if I want to try to pull up an example because I don't have one outright. But effectively... This is, let me see if I can find it. What I'm talking about is uh, the notch and what flanks the notch. Uh, it, oh, actually, I do have some, uh, I do have uh, an example here. Let me pull up one that wasn't messed with. Okay, so what I'm talking about is these misaligned elements. I apologize that the uh, quality of the image is not amazing. Okay, is it going to go? There we go. Okay. Uh, so you've got, you've got this thing. Uh, right there, and the elements over here, if you didn't notice, and I noticed it right away, in fact, even in the keynote, if you go back and watch that video, uh, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it, I'm just saying I did, I did react to this, I'm like, is it just me, or are those icons misspaced? Does it look awkward? Does it look like three icons are just kind of crammed in there like sardines? Your sardine icons over here, right? I mean, let's just forget about how it looks odd in terms of positioning, and you got this, this just weird space up there, but, like, it's just cramped. 
The, the, the icons seem bigger than they need to be. Well, the assets are scaled differently. So if you, you, you're effectively going to have, the icons are gonna look bigger, the keyboard's going to be a little bigger than what you may have been used to in terms of general usability with an iPhone 8 or an 8 Plus type of screen. Um, assets are going to be larger, and, and that may not bother you. Hell, you probably didn't even notice it. I apologize if you didn't notice it. If you can unnotice it now, that's great, but I can't. There are big icons there, huge icons, and it's just cramped. Uh, I don't like it, I don't like it, I don't, I don't like it one bit. I'm also not going to apologize for tweeting yesterday and upsetting people. I do that all the time. Like, if I haven't upset you, stick around. I'll do it eventually. Uh, the there's a, 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 On Twitter, it says, what's happening, right? So I typed in, what's happening is that you failed to properly align the animated GIF icon here on the, the status screen or whatever it was. And then I took a screenshot of what I was about to tweet and then tweeted it so that everybody could see what I was talking about. And I had at least three people get really angry at me. Say, why did you do that? Why did you show me that? I can't unsee it. You're welcome. Because it is. It's misaligned by a couple of pixels. Yeah, I'm the kind of guy who sees the difference in a few pixels. You know who else saw differences in a few pixels? Okay, I'm not going to invoke his name. So, if you don't mind those slightly enlarged assets and awkwardly crammed layouts and, you know, the other layout problems that... that May or may not exist in your mind. Uh, if you don't, if you don't see the problem, yeah, go with the ten. Sure, spend a couple of extra hundred, few hundred dollars on that. Um, if you don't use Touch ID for accessibility reasons, because it remains to be seen whether or not that the loss of a Touch ID, not just because of comfort, not just because of muscle memory, uh, is going to impact usability in general from certain features that you may have grown accustomed to with iOS. Uh, if you don't use Touch ID for accessibility reasons, uh, go with Face ID, which is a different value proposition. I'm not going to slam it. I'm not going to say it's bad. And I also don't want to hear the whole. They did. I mean, it was funny that it happened, but I, I give Apple the benefit of the doubt for the mistake in the keynote. I do. I I think what happened was they. they have, I I, I don't think it was an error with Face ID because if it was an error with Face ID, I think Craig would have done this. Uh, it's just he needed to do it immediately to. Um, uh, uh, get it to show you that it, it worked the first time. It just didn't work that first time. Um, I, I, I guess it, to me, dem if you if you've never tried to demo hardware or software, you don't know how challenging it could be. It's it's happened before for everybody. So to recap, uh, get the iPhone 10 if you want the most expensive iPhone to date, an iPhone without the most usable screen uh, space without, uh, and an iPhone with a questionable design choice that may never get fully mitigated. That that then the iPhone 10 is for you. Uh, but if you do hear someone call the 10 the latest and greatest, uh, you need to challenge them on the latter. Because I don't think it's the greatest. It's the latest. I'll give them that. That is true. It is It is one of the latest. I, lo I, I love how they did that, though. You know what I mean? Now, this is where I put my tinfoil hat on and start getting conspiratorial. Right? Just think about it. Why didn't they announce the 9? Because right? they wanted to make 10. It was the the anniversary, 10. But why, why are these iPhone 8s, not 7s's? Why aren't they 9s? Because you got nine ten, that's consecutive. Are they going to go back and they're going to give us the nine next year? That would be a little weird, right? Because the series is just off. So I believe it's it's it was a psychology. It was a, it was probably a marketing decision, and here's why: uh, because what sounds better to you, eight or ten? What sounds more to you, eight or ten? What do people tend to do when they're faced with two choices? Like, well, do I go with the cheap choice? Cheap more affordable choice or the, the more expensive choice. And, and, and some people believe that price is indicative of quality. I am here to tell you that it is absolutely not, in, at least in relation to these particular devices at this point in time. Um, certainly more so with the 10 than the 8s, or the uh, or both the 8s, I guess. The crazy 8s. That's, I think, what, I think that's what we should call them now. From, from this point forward, they're the crazy 8s. Because <laughs> they're the crazy ones, right? How, how dare Apple be traditional and, 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 and move the ball forward incrementally as well it's done over all these years and has not suffered from it? Um, the crazy eights. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think they did it to make people f move people towards the 10 because 10 is greater than 8. I am here to tell you, in my estimation, for all the aforementioned reasons in this video and others, that 10 is not greater than 8. It's my opinion. That's my decision tree. Uh, you are more than welcome to come up with your own, as I'm sure you have. Um, but I would strongly recommend that you challenge your own convictions. It will make you better. Uh, don't just look to justify your, your purchasing patterns because you're not doing yourself any service by doing that. Uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you for listening. I love you. 
I appreciate you, and may the Force be with you.